Rabbi uh, Richard Rick Jacobs is uh, with me, uh, the president of the URJ, the Union for Reform Judaism. Hello, uh, good afternoon from Tel Aviv. Bokerto from uh, New York. Um, we are going to discuss um, uh, the Torah portion. Well, we, we are reading, I'm, re I'm going to read two uh, portions uh, this week, Achrei Mot and Kedoshim, but I'm going to ask you about Kedoshim since it's uh, my Bar Mitzvah Torah portion. Uh, my my favorite Torah portion. It begins it begins with this with this verse. Vaydaber Adonai el Moshe leemor daber el kol adat bnei Israel veamarta lehem kedoshim tiyu ki kadosh ani Adonai eloichem. And in English, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the entire congregation of the children of Israel and say to them, You shall shall be holy, for I the Lord your God am holy which is quite strange idea. What, what, is, what is holy? Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty remarkable idea. If you think about what is holy, um, a lot of times we think of holy as things that, you know, you can't touch, you can't go near, they're dangerous, they're powerful, which are certainly dimensions of holiness. But for me, I think holiness is everywhere and at every moment and in everything. But it's usually our awareness that keeps us from somehow touching and experiencing that holiness. But very often, there are things that literally break our sort of sense that everything is just, you know, kind of mundane. And all of a sudden, there's a moment, an entrance to holiness. So I think holy is that which connects us to the deeper meaning of the universe, which I would call God, um, the Kadosh Baruch Hu. I mean, it's, it's certainly a part of our language, even the language for, for God and divinity. So for me in this parasha, what's amazing is that holiness is about so many different things. It's not only about prayer. It's not only about the things that we sort of label religious. It's about every day and everything. And therefore, the power of holiness in parashat Kedoshim is that much larger. Well, you, you, you have about, the, you think about the, oh, the kedoshim to you. It doesn't say kadosh to ye. It doesn't say in the singular. Is there something about holiness? Is about experiencing in community, uh, beyond the self, the, beyond the isolated individual. It's about connecting to that which is much larger. But there is also something uh, a little bit strange about the reasoning. You shall be holy because I'm holy. So says uh, God. Why, why does it make, why do we have to be holy because of his, of him being holy is, is not, is not really clear. Well, I think there's a spark of, of God in all of us. So when we actually become aware of that, we are connected to God and our experience can actually connect us to, uh, to God. Uh, so it's not just this causal thing. Uh, but it's also a dimension of who we are, how we were created, in whose image we are, uh, who we are. I also think it is in the plural, it's in the future, you know, Kedoshim Tihiyu. It's not that you're somehow holy, so you can just walk around with your, you know, head up in the air, you know, look at me, I'm holy. It's an aspiration to, to, to become aware and to become in touch with that and to have it inform our lives. So, yes, there's something very you know, challenging about this, but it's at the very heart of, of what the Jewish tradition is all about. It's, a, it's an aspiration or, or a prophecy? It's something that might happen in the future but can't happen right now? No, I, th I don't think it's a prophecy. I think it's an aspiration, meaning uh, th that you shall be holy. You shall strive to be holy. You shall continuously strive because it's not going to be automatic. I think sometimes, you know, people who are religious wherever they are in the spectrum of their religiosity can have the sense, you know, I'm doing the holy things, I'm a holy person. And it's not it's not a given to anyone. It doesn't matter what your position. You may be head of a denomination. You may be the head of a yeshiva. You may be a spiritual seeker, you know, who's sitting doing meditation uh, on the West Coast on the beach. There's, there's nothing inherently, you know, um, kiddush, there's no kiddushah that's automatically part of everyone's awareness and it's not a badge to be worn 
And that's why the opening of the parsha also says it's for the whole community. It's not for the priests. It's not just for the, 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 the learned class. This is accessible to everyone. Do, do you find it uh, 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 intriguing that Rashi, the, tr the traditional commentary on this, on this Pasuk by Rashi, basically puts the whole thing on, on uh, uh, separating oneself from sexual immorality. The whole commentary of Rashi is saying, well, Kedoshim is about sexual morality. Now, this is, this is particularly interesting because if it, co if it is connected to the holiness of God, well, you know, there, there is no need for God to be separated for sec from sexual immorality. So how can you make this connection between holiness and sexuality? I, I think that the key is that basically holiness is a potential part of every uh, human endeavor every human action. So there is Kedusha in sexuality. That's, I think, one of the incredibly inspiring parts of our Jewish tradition. And all, not all religious faiths actually would say that. You know, there are religious traditions that feel that sexuality is just inherently something that is divorced from Kedusha. It's something, you, you know, it's almost this necessary evil that you have to do to procreate. Our tradition, sexuality is a holy endeavor. However, it's not without boundaries in terms of what makes you know, sexual uh, relationships, kadosh, filled with kedusha. So I think that's that's where where the connection is. So I think you know, for us, look at look at the rest of uh, Leviticus 19. You know, somehow holiness has to do with how we treat our neighbors. It has to do with keeping Shabbat. It has to do with our relationship to our parents, to the stranger, um, the way in which we do tzedakah by the corners of our field. Somehow the experience of holiness is literally wherever you look, there's a potential way to experience that holiness and to, to create a community, a kilak dosha. So I, I think the power for Rashi, and I think the, the thing that Rashi first says in his commentary, which is a quote from Sifra, right. is that basically this section of the Torah, which is also called by scholars the holiness code, is literally the containing of everything in human experience. Everything in the religious path is right here. It's about Rashi, life. Rashi Make, it, making one's in, life holy. In, in every aspect. Going to work. You know, listen, I have a boring job where I, I sit and I, you know, I'm on a conveyor belt, you know, hitting the hammer. That there's Kiddusha in any part of my existence. Not just when I go and pray. Of course, there's holiness there potentially. There's not only holiness on sacred days, but on Tuesday morning and on Thursday afternoon. Those are potential places. And even in my, you know, my my secular day, there are in